The restless spirit of a young American Marine haunted a house in Portland, Oregon for two years, trying to convey to his mother the truth about his untimely end. This is an astonishing account of a ghost seeking justice and the clearing of his own name. 22-year-old Lieutenant James Sutton had come from a large middle-class family living in Portland early last century. His parents were proud when he was accepted for training as an officer in the Marine Corps at Annapolis Military Academy. They looked forward to his regular letters, which were cheerful and affectionate, but the one opened by his mother on the morning of October 11, 1907, for some reason filled her with dread. Although it was full of the usual good humour, as Rosa Sutton held the neatly written pages, her hand began to tremble and she had a strong sense of foreboding. The next evening, she had a sudden attack of sharp pain and a feeling of shock. She went upstairs to check the letter again to make sure she had not missed anything. She began to experience a strong premonition that James would come home unexpectedly, and she even prepared his bedroom in readiness. The family were then surprised when Mr Sutton suddenly arrived home from work looking distressed and pale. He had received a telegram from Annapolis informing them that James had taken his own life. Mrs Sutton, a devout Catholic, refused to believe that her son had committed such an act. She later wrote that, at that very moment, her son, whom she called Jimmy, stood right in front of her and swore his innocence, exclaiming that his hands were as free from blood as when he was five years old. No one else in the room saw his apparition, and when Mrs Sutton kept insisting that he was there, they just assumed that the news of his loss had been too much for her. However, what they could not dismiss were the facts that she relayed as she listened to the unseen presence. She told them that her son was trying to tell them something important, as the ghost reported blow by blow what a group of three other men had inflicted on him, also breaking his watch. He explained that he did not know he had been shot until his soul went to eternity. Before disappearing, he pleaded with his mother to clear his name and said that he would never rest until it was cleared. James Phantom was persistent. On October 16, he appeared again and, according to Mrs Sutton's testimony, gave further details about his passing. He described his injuries and how his attackers had tried to bandage his head to hide what they had done. James' apparition later appeared for a third time, still wrapped in a great coat and with his face badly disfigured and discoloured. He appeared to be looking for something, complaining pitifully that he could not find his shoulder knot. By now, the whole household had experienced the ghost's presence. James' younger brother Dan was adamant that he had seen him on one occasion, and his sister Louise was very aware of his presence. Another sister, Daisy, dreamed one night of seeing a photograph of a group of young Marines and her eyes fixated on the face of one of James' fellow officers, a man called Utley. Soon after, Mrs Sutton reported that her son had tried to tell her that his body had been hidden in a basement by a lieutenant called Utley. The authenticity of the information imparted in the sightings started to be confirmed when Louise returned from James' funeral at Annapolis with his belongings, which included a shattered wristwatch. At the court of inquiry into James' death, the Suttons listened with mounting disbelief to the authorities' official story of their son's passing. It became apparent that there was a deliberate strategy by the lawyers to use Mrs Sutton's regular communications with her son's ghost to discredit her. According to the Marine Corps records, a drunken fight had broken out after James and some friends had attended a naval dance at Carvel Hall Hotel. They claimed that James had threatened the others and fetched weapons from his tent and during his subsequent arrest had turned one on himself in remorse for his actions. Mrs Sutton continued to insist that the verdict was a cover-up for malicious intent and deliberate homicide, but the Corps tried to portray her as a delusional fool. 
Interestingly, James was buried with military honours, which are not provided when the deceased serviceman takes their own life, and also as a captain, so above his actual rank. Lieutenant James Sutton was buried at Arlington Cemetery, but his ghost continued to haunt his former home in Portland. At first his family felt there was little they could do. The naval doctors at the inquest had testified definitively that James' face had not been disfigured and their verdict of self-harm seemed in order. But after two years of James' persistent spiritual presence, his parents made an agonised decision. They asked for his body to be exhumed. The resulting independent inquiry revealed new information which confirmed many of the claims made by his ghost. Witnesses stated that James had not drunk excessively and had been set upon by four other officers in a car on the way back to Marine Barracks. His disfigurement and injuries were exactly as those manifested in his spectral appearance and were also evidence that he had been attacked by others. Most tellingly, the angle of the bullet's entry into his body was inconsistent with a self-inflicted wound. It was also found that the shoulder knot of his uniform was missing, an object he had been looking for in one of his visitations. Soon after this, the Suttons received an anonymous letter confirming the fact that James had met his end through foul play. The handwriting was traced and identified as that of a young serviceman who had been in the group after the naval dance, but all attempts to track him down failed. However, it seemed that James' ghost was satisfied. As a staunch Catholic, he had needed to remove the stigma of self-harm from his name. Mrs Sutton still caught a glimpse of James from time to time, but the image grew fainter and then finally disappeared for good. Lieutenant James Sutton's grave was a tiny stone under a huge tree without even his dates on it. However, his persistent spirit had finally cleared his name and a kind of justice had been done.